All right. Hey, everyone. Um, thanks, Zach, for the great talk. Um, here is a live Q&A. Um, people can start putting the questions onto the pad, and right. Zach will answer them. Um, Zach, take it away. Great talk. Um, here is a live Q&A. Okay, so first question, uh, let's see. Okay, so the first question is why did you, why did you choose an internal state versus many state buffers? So the main reason was more control from, well, yeah, control from the game. Um, perspective i mean if this was to be a tool if this was to be a tool that um perhaps was m used for more like real world applications where maybe you'd want users to to be able to like use any of their their pre-existing email like if you wanted to really make a grid of cells um that that would so then i think the maybe the, the maybe using real buffers in that case would probably be the better thing since you wouldn't have to like redo everything. Um, but I found that just like centralizing, centralizing the state into one place for the game, at least um, made it the, the easiest to implement. Um, next one, do you have plans to port Shenzhen IO to Emacs? Well, I was actually thinking about um, Exapunks perhaps, but Shenzhen IO would be, would be pretty cool to, um to to add as well um so this this doesn't use any wasm at all so the next question is um did this use wasm um so we call so it's asking about like using wasm emacs so this actually this this is this doesn't use any any wasm under under the hood um it's it's pretty much analogous to the game tis 100 is to real assembly as this game is to web assembly Slight resemblance, but um, but yeah, not just just a game. So okay. So the next question is why Wasm rather than a more traditional assembly dialect? Um, it wouldn't be harder to implement, right? So it, it would actually probably have been easier, in all honesty, just because like you know more traditional. Like like TS one hundred for example, you have you have each of the line you have each each instruction on a line, and it it's pretty easy to um you know syntax hiding just one line. So with this with the weird s expressions across line deeply nested, and then like the step debugger thing and these weird cell things, they made things really complicated. But I I definitely wanted to like the main reason is I didn't I wanted it to to not to look as, le as as least as to look to resemble TS100 um, as little as possible, <laughs> even though it's still pretty much is the same game. Thanks, Zach. I think we still have about like um, eight minutes or so, or eight and a half minutes of Q&A time. So folks, if you do have any other questions, please do keep them coming in the pad. And uh, yeah, Zach will continue answering them. Sounds good. Thank you. Cheers.
So next question, any next projects on your mind? Yeah, actually, I have a, a couple ideas for projects. Um, th and these would all be hopefully maybe more useful. <laughs> um, I think tree sitter is pretty cool. I um, I think there's a lot of directions that that could go. Like there's a, there's a plugin in NeoVim called um, and NeoGen, which generates documentation. That, that'd be cool. I, I've been playing with, um, what else? Yeah, I mean, hopefully next next year at next next Emax conference, I, I'll I could be presenting something more more useful. Next question: Does this work with any other Pren based editing packages? Not at all. Not at all. In fact, um, just because of the way the buffer was set up. How it's it's just like the illusion of a buffer, like not 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 even like the the, the syntax parsing works correctly because um, just because everything's like the the way the grids are set up, like you have like the the other cells kind of interfering with the the way that parses. Um, but the way it was architected, um, it's it's actually a really simple macro. There's a little macro called like run in buffer. So it's like you run them, you have like run in buffer and then you put your ELIS code and then it tries to create the illusion that it's actually running in a real buffer. So this macro kind of does all the configuration setup. So, um, so I mean, maybe with like more configuration settings, maybe something like that could have been done. So, Next question: What kind of tool could you use this idea? Oh, going back to the um, oh, going back to next projects on your mind. This actually came up to my mind is like a graphical. So like there's so um, in in terms of like um, uh, there's there's a lot of graph graph graphing tools like ASCII. So like you know you you type in some text text representation, it generates an ASCII document. I think it'd be really cool to have like. Um, an Emacs package that sort of works like those online really slick um, graph graph drawing tools. So like you just press tab and it draws a new a new box with a little with an ASCII arrow, and then like it it can create these these diagrams really easy. I think that would be a really cool project. Um, and so something like that, obviously, like you have different cells, and so that's actually another thing I think would be cool to to work on. So designing puzzles. So um, it's funny um, if you if you listen to Zach Barth's talk about uh, TS100, he goes into like you pretty just like you pretty just you pretty just it's just like you make up a puzzle you think could work, and chances are it does end up working, and that's how I wrote at least my pu custom puzzles um, in the game. Just like come up with some random idea, think it. it probably should work and then try to go implementing it and usually it, it it's a, it's implementable i mean four by three blocks of, b boxes can you can do quite a bit and i don't put any restrictions on the cells like ts100 um what are your favorite changes in upcoming emacs 29 so definitely tree sitter is is pretty cool um just because like you have syntax you have access to that you can build syntax aware um, extensions so like I was just playing I was playing around with it and it's pretty cool you can just like get the syntax tree and search for syntax patterns so it's exciting to see what um, what might be done with that Are there tools to add more puzzles? Um, so there's not tools, but in the in the in this in the code itself, there's there's another there's a file called Asimblocks Puzzles, um, and it's pretty much just like you have a generator function, like you you configure. It's just like you're pretty much defining a struct. So I mean, if you're familiar with Emacs list, you could you can kind of define puzzles pretty easily. It'll just like define where your inputs are. Generator function to generate these inputs. And then a generator function to generate which outputs you want. So it's pretty. It's pre, I mean, code-wise, it's pretty, pretty self-contained. Um, but I, yeah, maybe, maybe 
I could have done a, like a more streamlined job with that. Um, like a binding to graph graph is. Um, oh yeah, with the graph thing I was mentioning. So that would also actually be pretty cool too. Like just like, but I I was thinking more just like plain ASCII graphs. Just like like you where you have just like um, so a tool a tool I've seen recently is, is is called Diagon. So you basically type in like some really like a textual representation of the graph like a arrow b b arrow c and it generates like a, an ascii diagram just like just in so something like that would be cool like so like you have like a grid of a grid of like little nodes and control f maybe brings you to the next one and maybe tab maybe would create a new node with a new ascii arrow to it that would be a cool that would be a really a cool extension but yeah, I mean, obviously, Graph is, is an amazing tool, so a lot could be done with that as well. I think we have about like a minute or a minute and a half of live questions. Um, we are opening the Q&A, um, this BBB room, uh, for people to join. So folks who want to do that um, are welcome to do so. Um, and um, yeah, after that, the stream will move on, but you can still come in this BBB room or keep asking questions on the pad. Okay, I think that's about all the time that we have on the stream. Uh, thanks again, Zach, so much, and both for the Q&A and for your great talk, and uh, see you all around. Thank you. Cheers. You are currently the only person in this conference.